Hi, I'm Nathan. I go by Pete Parker, and every week I do comic book reviews because that's the rule at my house. If I want to keep buying them, then I have to review them. This review is going to be for Avengers number 14. Uh, you could also call that Fear Itself Avengers, or Avengers Fear Itself, or The Avengers 14. Any of those is probably a correct. Although, uh, I could probably give you, according to the Insidia, what it is. Maybe. I don't know if it's in there. Oh, there it is. So it's Avengers 14, officially. Uh, this is written by Brian Michael Bendis and drawn by John Romita. Again, John Romita Jr. Uh, I have mentioned before that I do not like John Romita Jr.'s art. So apparently on this series, John Romita is the one that started with this series. And he drew up to like number 7 or something like that, pretty close to 10, I think. Um, and then a couple other people have been stepping in. This last one was Chris Boccolo, which I really enjoyed. I got uh, kind of used to it and was totally expecting this one to be uh, Chris Boccolo again, at least for this arc, right? But I guess uh, they were just giving Romita a break for a little while, and then they're coming back to him. I hope it doesn't change artists every issue, uh, that it goes a couple issues per artist and then maybe rotates, but uh, it seems like Marvel's doing that more and more every time... As soon as you really get used to a, a specific artist on a book, the next week or the next month, it's a totally different artist on the same book. And then they go back to them, so it's really interesting what they're doing these days. Um, so anyway, the story here on this uh, cover was by another person that I don't love. That's not on here. I forget what whose name that is. But it's the same as this last one that they did, and I didn't really like it then either. Uh, so the story in this book is basically um, they're continuing with the interview situation where they talk to each of the... Somebody is talking to each of the Avengers and interviewing them about the fear itself kind of situation uh, as it's happening. It seems to be currently happening, and they're interviewing them right now. Uh, whereas before, it was kind of in the past that they were doing all these interviews and stuff. Um... And basically they're talking about how New York was attacked by Sin, which is interesting too, because wasn't she in Fear Itself just in uh, in Washington, D.C.? And there she is in New York also attacking New York at the exact same time. Or maybe she this is before D.C. and she started in New York, attacked there, and then went to D.C. and did the Blitzkrieg, but it's, it's interesting. It could have been anybody there. And then they talk about how sad they are that uh, Ben Grimm got one of the hammers and became kind of an evil dude there. Uh, and they have to fight him more or less. And then they're also talking about how uh, the Red Hulk stepped up and became a huge hero in this situation uh, fighting the Thing. So most of the story is about uh, the Red Hulk fighting the Thing and this kind of really big battle between two uh, super strong people. Uh, one is kind of mystically strong, and the other one is cosmically strong, I think. I think the Red Hulk's energy is cosmic-based or semi-cosmic-based. Uh, and also, uh, the thing knocks down Avengers Tower in this one also. So uh, I didn't really get... I understood from the words that the Avengers were trying to say that the Red Hulk earned his place on the team and was a true hero in this situation. But I didn't really see him, like, save a bunch of people or uh, do, like, anything super heroic other than fight this fight more or less alone. And he, he did fight the fight as he was being repeatedly struck down over and over, and it seemed like he was out of it. He came from nowhere to keep fighting it, but at the same time, uh, in the end, he ultimately lost and was uh, thrown across New York, it seems like anyway. And they didn't hear from him again. Here's the very end, and then uh, Jarvis is talking about how he used to be, th the scariest day of his life was when he, somebody invaded the uh, Avengers mansion, and he was there alone with nobody to protect him, but that's not the scariest day of his life anymore. Now, the thing beating their Red Hulk, their strongest member of the Avengers team, was his scariest moment or whatever. So an interesting part of this book is that it's another loss. Uh, if you're reading the Invincible Iron Man series that I just reviewed also, 505, 
Iron Man lost to the Hammer guy in Paris at the same time. And as much as I'm not reading very many of the tie-ins, if any, I would imagine that's a similar theme going on throughout all of the other Hammer's areas, is that the good guys are losing more or less to the bad guys, because it has to be kind of a whole event that's moving forward. Like, as much as it's been said that those tie-ins don't actually cover the stuff that you need to know about for Fear itself, and that all you have to do is buy the main series, that is true and not true at the same time because if you really want to know what's happening in the whole event then you have to read the other stories to understand that this is happening around the world to different people at the same time and they're all going to come together uh, in hopefully in the fear itself series on their own so uh, i will mention again that i don't really like john romita's art uh there, I, there's two schools of thought basically you like it or you don't but uh, I don't particularly care for it but at the same time I've seen the Red Hulk drawn by him so much now since the beginning of this Avengers book that it it seems right like in this image that I showed you here that seems like the most right version or the right drawing of the Red Hulk that there is out there like, John Romita's Red Hulk is the correct Red Hulk, and everything else is just a one-off of that. I didn't particularly like what Ben Grimm looked like, but, you know, he's kind of changed because he's got the hammer or whatever. And uh, as much as this fight went back and forth and back and forth, there, there really wasn't, like, any contest between. It. Uh, as much as the thing got hit in the face and the stomach from the Red Hulk, he really didn't get hurt by him at all, so kind of says something about how strong and powerful this magic is I think this book was the first book where I really understood and made the connection that these hammers are similar to Thor's hammer, so these characters who wield these hammers have similar strength to Thor so if you put that in perspective they're kind of a little bit more evil and their powers are more fear based, so because there's so much fear going on in the world, that makes a lot of sense why the thing could beat the Red Hulk or whatever, uh, when Red Hulk kind of beat Thor before, so those are all interesting discussions anyway. So when it comes down to it, um, I like the story, but I don't really like the cover art, I don't really like the interior art, and most of it was this big fight, so it's really difficult to give this a a good rating. I would give it probably three out of five. Uh, if it was probably a different artist and a different cover, it might be a four out of five, maybe. But there wasn't a lot of progression to the story either. You just got this really big epic fight and a little bit of interview monologue from all the Avengers characters that more or less didn't matter. So there you go. Three out of five, Avengers number 14. Uh, this used to be, at the beginning of it, uh, or, and during the Infinity Gauntlet thing, probably my favorite series from Marvel that comes out every year, but it doesn't seem like that's continuing. It's kind of been hit or miss in the past couple ta ca past couple issues, and then this one isn't, isn't great. So there you go. Uh, if you want to check out my other reviews, uh, look for me at Spidey207, without the E, on YouTube, and Pete Parker elsewhere. Uh, otherwise, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.